Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Welcome to Fahad's tutorial and this is another important and big chapter of biology. The title of this chapter is Transport in Organism. So in this chapter the transport in plants and transport in animals will be discussed. And you know that this is the main content that we need to study in this chapter throughout. So I'm planning to upload a uh, content based uh, tutorials on this because this is the first lecture of this uh, playlist and following this content I think uh, total 13 to 14 class would be there so uh, I hope uh, you'd be able to understand all the topics clearly so that it would be much more helpful for understanding the next level biology when you'll study about the blood circulation when you'll study about more about the absorptions of water and minerals that would be much more helpful so you think that in this talk in this chapter the main contents that we need to study about imbibition diffusion osmosis transpiration there are some process i, I know that you might knew it earlier that you have already studied about it in your previous classes but also as uh, in this topic this will be again discussed and number three it's very important this is very important that is absorption of water and mineral salts uh, in plants so when we'll study about the imbibition diffusion osmosis then we we know that how this process uh, is going on so this is a series of videos and we need to understand the link between the content and this is a beauty number four a big part that is the translocation in plants how the xylem tissues and phloem tissues are working how the water is moving from from the root hair to the leaf and again how the food particles from leaf to the other bodies is moving and these uh, reversive actions is known as the translocation in plants much important this is the blood circulations when we need to about the blood circulations, we need to know what is blood, we need to know what are the components of blood, what are the functions of blood, and then the central pumping organ, which is heart, the structure of heart, the structure of human heart, and then we know that the circulation process, which is double circulations, is going on. Then we need to know the uh, the, the blood vessels like arteries and veins and capillaries we need to know about the blood grouping we know that ABO blood grouping system is discussed here primarily and I will upload a video on it uh, explaining that why this is ABO blood grouping systems and what is the invention history you must be uh, feeling good to know about this is another blood grouping is RH blood group which is a racist factor that will be again discussed here then we need to know about the blood vessels, arteries and veins, the differences between it, the capillaries, and then blood pressure. When we'll study about blood pressure, we need to know about hypertension, another silent killer disease, and we must be aware about it. Then some circulation or uh, blood circulation related disease like heart attack and rheumatic fever, and also leukemia has been discussed. So you see. Uh, together 10 to 12 main contents are there in this chapter so you think about that the, the content the title of the chapter is transport in organism so how transport is going on in plants how transport is going on in animals especially in humans bloods are there heart is pumping and blood is moving away and these transportations is going on without any break so what's going on in plants before going to study all this content in this particular video i'm going to explain this first three topic that is imbibitions diffusions and osmosis in the next video i shall upload about the transpiration and then i shall explain about the process of absorption of water and then the mineral salts think about what are the relations between plants and water we know that protoplasm is known as the physical basis of life and water is known as the fluid of life. Without water, cell cannot perform well. In order to cell growth, in order to cell function, water 
is required. Water is definitely required. Without water, protoplasm and the cell cannot function well. So there is, uh, I mean, part and parcel relationship between water and plants. Now think about some process. What is imbibition? Simply speaking, imbibition is the process of absorption of water. And when we we'll study about imbibition, we need to think about some word which is hydrophilic. You know that hydrophilic is the word. You know that hydro means water and philic means love. So hydro means water and philic means love. So those are actually has some sort of affinity to water. These substances are known as hydrophilic substances like cellulose, like starch and gelatin. Think about um, a tissue. If a tissue, I just keep and touch a tissue paper to the water, then it will be soaked very, very quickly because it has some affinity to water and it can actually absorb water. This absorption is the process is known as imbibition. So uh, we can say the definition of imbibition is when a hydrophilic substance or dry or half dry colloidal substance absorb water, this is known as imbibition. And those substances that have some sort of like affinity to water, they are actually known as hydrophilic substance. And the example is starch, cellulose, gelatin. And there are other examples also. So, as simply speaking, imbibition is the process of absorption of water. Very simple. Now think about diffusion. This is very important. Diffusion means, um, you know, uh, when somebody is using body spray or room spray, when uh, somebody is using body spray, think about it, and the smell, we can feel it because uh, we can smell it actually because it's a process spontaneously it's moving around and spreading into the air so it's equally it's distributing is equally spread into the air and we can feel it this is the diffusion so the diffusion is the spreading spontaneously of any medium from the higher concentration region of higher concentration to the region of lower concentration this is diffusion so in its in its definite temperature and pressure any uh, particles uh, is spreading in any medium it can be in water it can be in air this is known as diffusion and when we'll study about diffusion we need to know another thing so the diffusion diffusion is a process of spreading the particles spontaneously equally to an any medium it can be in water it can be in air also so diffusion is, is means spreading spreading spontaneously spontaneously and then when diffusion is going on there is a pressure which is required and this is diffusion pressure and we can say it, this is dp so this is diffusion diffusion pressure so the diffusion pressure is uh, under a same uh, temperature and pressure or standard temperature and pressure when uh, it is it is actually the potential energy of any particles to diffuse so the diffusion pressure means that the potential energy of any particles to diffuse and there is another thing which is required that is diffusion pressure deficit so this is known as dpd so we can say diffusion pressure deficit so this is the differences between the diffusion pressure between the solutions and the solvent in this case uh, dpd is required because we know that in case of mesophyll tissue when there is diffusion pressure deficit from one cell to another cell then water is absorbing and that is why it's moving from one cell to another cell and this is known as diffusion pressure deficit this is the differences between the solutions and solvent and uh, the dp is the diffusion pressure the pressure that is under the same 
temperature and pressure the potential energy of any particles to diffuse is the diffusion pressure of that particle so i hope you understand it's written completely in your book when you study think that what you are studying and try to relate these things with your regular life so then things will be much more easier so again you know that in case of gaseous substance the diffusion rate is depending on the molecular mass of it the lower the molecular mass the greater the diffusion rate so that is the different issue but in this case diffusion is spreading particles spontaneously in any medium so i hope you understand the diffusion pressure and there are also some uh, factors that is actually affecting diffusion because when there is a temperature, more temperature, diffusion pressure, I mean diffusion will be increasing in case of high temperature. So this is the thing that I am explaining here in case of diffusion. And in the next video, I am coming up with osmosis and transpirations. So I hope you understand these things. And this is the first lecture of this uh, topic and I am coming up with the series of videos next. So stay tuned and comments in the section so that I can understand that you really understand my tutorials and is it beneficial for you. So stay well.